have a long-standing partnership with the Anglican Church of Melanesia in the Solomon Islands and we've begun working with the Anglican Church of Melanesia in Vanuatu also. What I will be speaking about today is our solar project which gives solar capital loans to women's groups um, as an income generating project and the aim of the project is to help households access markets they would not normally access and have um, access to to uh, solar technology, good quality solar technology. And we have come up with this project as a way of distributing without creating dependence. So Bright Lights for Rural Communities was piloted in 2010 based on an African model run by a social enterprise called Barefoot Power. Barefoot Power has uh, produced pro-poor, pro low-cost quality solar. And their model basically trained entrepreneurs they would go out with capital loans. The capital loan is the solar itself. Sell, return the cost of the, the, the solar and keep a profit. Um, it was dubbed business in a bag and tried to uh, give opportunities to youth and women. So uh, when we ran this pilot, we then significantly altered it. Um, we found that the entrepreneurs, a one-off training didn't support them. We found that there were social pressures, especially for young people, in giving away solar. And so we decided we needed to start again and redesign our own model. So now we work in partnership with the Anglican Church of Melanesia to import solar. And um, in Vanuatu, we also, we don't do it directly through the church, but through alternative communities trade in Vanuatu, which is a local um, alternative Livelihoods Trade Group. <laughs> so, um, so basically what we do is um, we, we go out and we establish what we call agencies or women's agencies in rural areas and we have lots of demand from Honiara to, and, and Santo as well to establish there but we're really trying to focus on rural areas and this um, is uh, one of our agencies in Makira province. We, in expanding to a new island or region, we've started with one or two agents and across over time we've uh, gone to more locations. We go and we have a meeting with the church leadership and they get to decide who runs the agency. It doesn't mean that it, it is just a project for women. Um, they get to decide which part of the church will have this income generating project. So we sit down and we, 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 we talk about the things that have worked and haven't worked in other places and then they try to visualise what might work and not work in their region or their island. So at the end of it, every time so far, and now we have about 10 agents working across uh, Solomons in Vanuatu, all the groups are women because everyone has decided they'll probably do the best job of it based on our successes and failures. It's been uh, a difficult project in some senses, some ways that in some senses because we've had to start so small and, and, it, and grow it instead of trying to cover off lots of places at once. But it has been really, really fantastic just creating these participatory meetings where people can sit down and really look at real, what's happened in real life and where we can go from there. We sign a simple uh, MOU with the agent, which makes it clear what they are to return and what they can keep as profit. Uh, the business is subsidised through shipping to remote areas and training. It's interesting that a similar solar project in Vanuatu in the Banks and Torres Islands, the prices were so much higher than in Villa and in Santo because uh, the people there incorporated the shipping into the cost. These people are disadvantaged because they live far away, which we know is a very common issue in the Pacific. We, the project actually subsidised the costs of shipping. Um, the women groups themselves, and it's run through the, the Mothers Union, mainly, not all the time, but most of the time, which is one of the largest women's church organisations in the Pacific, it's the largest in Solomon Islands and is, has a significant presence in Vanuatu. At, at each level, they decide what they're going to do with the profit. We don't dictate that, but we do monitor it because that's a part of us uh, learning and us assisting them also through just open communication and having a sounding board, if you like. It's really interesting. So, for example, in Makira, the women keep, there's $50 Solomon Islands profit that they get from, we have a few different types of solar, but the main popular one. Um, 
they, they keep 20 for themselves and give 20 the per, to the 30 to the person who sells, who is normally a mother's union member. But in Isabel, the mother's union keeps 50% of the profit to run their projects and then maybe gives um, the men who they use as salesmen some betel nut. So um, if we want to talk about, sometimes I think when we talk about women's economic empower, empowerment, we forget, um, we, we sometimes we are implying the reverse that women are not empowered in any sense and that is of course absolutely not true. So I have a, you know, a few numbers here. Uh, our standard system costs us about $17 Australia to get to the Solomon Islands or Vanuatu. That's a very difficult process. Um, after shipping, and we add in spare parts because uh, it becomes 25. Then for project sustainability, we have a markup, and then the customer price is 38 Australian dollars, roughly, which has been deemed affordable, and the agent gets $7. So. As you can see, compared to some of the other numbers coming out in the presentation today, we are very small, but we are growing really fast and we can't meet the demand for people who would like to participate in the program. But there are people who are making some, some nice profits from this. I'd like to just uh, finish by sharing a few observations. I'm sure there's many things I haven't been able to cover. I think the, six, the first one is that I think the success of the program is based is the fact that it's based on relationships and it's, it's business with heart. So we, um, Australian Anglican, uh, Anglican Overseas Aid, have a good relationship with the Church of Melanesia and with the project coordinators in each country, Solomons and Vanuatu, and they have good relationships with the agents. We sit down and ask the agents, please, you know, if you can't return the money for any reasons, let's just talk about why. You know, we're, all the, we're here to help each other. Um, and so we find that, you know, the program has a high level of honesty. I think the strength of the program is that it, it, ha it, it, it harnesses the strengths in Melanesian culture, um, such as kinship relations and Wontokism, rather than seeing it as a barrier. And the church provides a legitimate structure that has built-in accountability. People, lots of people have sort of expressed the sentiment, this is a project to help the, reduce, to help the church redu reduce its de dependency, but at the same type, time it's helping rural communities. So we shouldn't abuse it, because we, we want it to keep going. The second observation I would like to make um, is that I could have done this entire presentation on the benefits of solar. Uh, people are reducing it. The aim of the project is to help people reduce spending on kerosene and torch batteries which do not provide adequate light. And our small systems also charge mobile phones which we know is an enabling wonderful thing and sometimes uh, has the reverse bad side to it as well but it is, you know, it's, it has really, really changed um, the context in which we work. You know, kids, people buy these for their kids to study. Um, it's, you know, there's, it reduces the risk of household fires because of kerosene and candles and um, burns on children and women are saying it is just, it's really just making life a little bit easier having this technology. With the built-in maintenance component, we're making sure that consu consumers or customers, you know, are tr are, we're trying to help them as well and make sure that this technology does, doesn't lie defunct like I've seen so many times across the, the Pacific in, uh, you know, bad solar systems at clinics, etc. And I think there's a lot of learning in this area. To still, to still be done. Uh, the, the former Deputy Premier of Isabel Province, Rhoda Sikalabu, who also did a solar project in her ward, said, um, came and spoke at a meeting, a mother's union meeting, and was encouraging the women to take part in this project. And she said, when the women go to garden and they see the sun setting, and they think, oh, I must go home now and find kerosene. Now women aren't worrying about this. It is lessening their stress. The thing that I want you to understand is because this is um, lessening violence from our lives. Man and wife fight all the time, but since we have had this solar, it has lessened because they have money to buy other things for the family. So it's one thing that's reducing stress. I'm not saying that solar means less violence, but I'm saying it is an interesting area to explore in terms of safety, in terms of literacy levels, in terms of education. And um, I think there is a link between how this solar project has evolved from the pilot being about entrepreneurs and microfinance and, and become a, a project owned by the Mothers' Union and the link between gender roles and equality. 
it is, it's um, really interesting that at the beginning they said, oh, well, the wind can manage the money, but they can't manage the maintenance. They'll never, they will never be interested to fix a solar system. And after a year of just suggesting it, women are now doing 50% of the maintenance, as you can see in this photo. And I, I think um, one, of my, um, one of my mentors and one of my people, that I, uh, the Mother's Union president, who I have enormous amount of respect for, she said, and this is maybe going on a little bit of a divergence here from my, from my presentation, but she said, you know, I go for an approach that, um, that helps us to be recognised and helps us to participate to help our, uh, for the development of our communities. We must do it non-verbally by showing that we can participate and make decisions. We have to start at the bottom and be included in decision making there. We must push women inside parish groups, in, in our parish vestry committees, then our district committees, and then at diocesan level. It will not happen overnight, but we must increase participation and seek recognition. Recognition and participation is very important, and we need to show that we can make decisions too. Mothers must promote this within our homes and ask our sons to cook and clean. We must target the children in our Anglican primary schools. She sees ch the church as a, a a, a large area, a, a place in society where we can start to, to try and target some of the behavioural changes that have been talked about this morning. And by seeing a woman holding a screwdriver in her hand when someone said that that was not possible two years ago, I hope that our project within the Church of Melanesia is, is hopefully making some small contribution to her vision. And I'll end it there. Thank you.